Good day students. Today our topic of discussion is fiber optics. How do we make use of optical fibers in optical fiber communication? Today, almost all of the data communication is done by using light rays, EM waves, passing it through optical fiber cables. So it has great significance in today's world and so let's learn about how it is done. Now fiber optics is the science of transmitting information through optical fibers. Here the signal, the light signal, EM wave, is transmitted in the optical fiber and here it is converted from the electrical signal into the light and then transmitted through the optical fiber and at the receiving end of the fiber it is converted back from the light to the electrical signal. In optical fibers, huge amount of data can be transmitted and the huge data rates are achieved. Now let us see what an optical fiber is. It is a transparent medium as thin as air made of glass, quartz or clear plastic and it is designed to guide light along its path. The working principle in it is total internal reflection. So in this optical fiber, light enters through one end of the fiber. It undergoes successive total internal reflections and it travels through the length of the fiber. Okay, So here we have this image here showing the total internal reflection of a laser light through this glass sheet. Now here we have the glass tube of this shape and the light will travel through the path of that optical medium. So what is the shape of the medium? Light will follow that path. Now let us see the different parts of an optical fiber. It consists basically of three parts that is core, cladding and sheath. The core is the innermost cylindrical light guiding region. So at the center, this is the axis of the fiber. The central, the innermost cylindrical region that guides light, light is passing through this medium, this is called the core. Now surrounding that we have the cladding. So the coaxial middle region that surrounds the core is called the cladding. And the refractive index of the cladding is slightly lower than that of the core. And this helps to confine light within the core. Now sheath is the outermost coaxial region that protects the core and cladding from uh, abrasions or contamination and harmful influence of moisture. Here the buffer and jacket together comprises of the sheath. This also increases the mechanical strength of the fiber. We understand that the core and cladding is made of glass. So here the protection will be provided by the sheath. Now let us see what we mean by total internal reflection. When light travels from a denser medium to a rarer medium, it will bend away from the normal. Now, as the angle of incidence is increased, the angle of refraction also increases. And for a particular angle of incidence, that is phi c called critical angle, angle of refraction will be 90 degrees. It will graze the surface of the boundary. And for all other angles, that is greater than phi c, light gets totally reflected towards the denser medium itself. That is, it undergoes total internal reflection. If phi 1 is the angle of incidence, then the angle of reflection will be equal to phi 1 itself following the laws of reflection. Now here, from Snell's law, we have that ratio of refractive indices n2 by n1 is equal to sine phi c by sine r. 
here we have taken that the angle of incidence is at critical angle. So at that time, the angle of refraction will be 90 degree. Hence, sine phi c by sine 90 is equal to sine phi c. So we can mathematically calculate sine phi c, that is sine of critical angle is equal to n2 by n1. And for all angles greater than critical angle at the core cladding interface, light is totally internal reflected through the fiber. Now, if we take glass air interface, we have critical angle to be 41.8 degrees. And for glass water interface, the critical angle is 62.7 degree. Now, let us define acceptance angle for the optical fiber. It is the angles at which the light can enter into the optical fiber. So here, let us assume that this is the image, schematic image showing the optical fiber and we have the central core region of refractive index N1 and the cladding has refractive index N2 and at the face of the fiber, light is incident at an angle theta i. This optical fiber is placed in air and the surrounding medium refractive index is represented as N. That will be less than the refractive index of the core. So when light is entering from a medium of refractive index N to the optical fiber at an angle theta 1, it will refract into it at an angle theta r. Now based on theta r, light will be incident at the core cladding surface at an angle phi. If it is greater than the critical angle for this optical fiber, it will undergo total internal reflection. So here at the face of the fiber, uh, we have Snell's law given by n1 by n is equal to sine theta i by sine theta r. Now as the angle of incidence theta i is increased, here the angle of incidence on the core cladding interface phi decreases. And hence theta i can be increased only up to uh, the value where phi becomes the critical angle. From the geometry of this triangle, I can write that theta r is equal to 90 minus phi. Hence, we are going to substitute sine theta r as sine of 90 minus phi that is equal to cos phi. So, Snell's law becomes n1 by n is equal to sine theta i by cos phi. Now, if the angle of incidence on the core cladding interface is the critical angle, the angle of incidence into the fiber theta i will be the maximum possible value in which light can enter it. That will be theta max. Hence, at phi c, theta i will be theta max. Snell's law gives n1 by n is equal to sine theta max by cos phi c. Now, the cosine term can be rewritten as square root of 1 minus sine square phi c. Now we have the sine of critical angle as n2 by n1. Hence, this can be substituted and this expression becomes cos phi c is equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square whole divided by n1. Now using this expression for Snell's law, we get n1 by n is equal to sine theta max by cos phi c that is equal to n1 by square root of n1 square minus n2 square. Now the acceptance angle is sine theta max. So this is equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square by n. Now the light rays contained within the cone of the full angle to theta max are accepted and transmitted along the fiber. So if this is theta max, this is also theta max and we have a cone that is formed here. So all the light rays falling within this cone will be transmitted and this cone is called the acceptance cone. Hence, acceptance angle is the maximum angle that a light ray can have relative to the axis of the fiber and propagate through the fiber. Here, light rays that fall within the cone 
will be transmitted along the fiber whereas light rays falling outside the cone will get absorbed into the cladding and jacket now another parameter defined in the optical fiber is its numerical aperture na it defines the light gathering ability of the optical fiber it is the sine of acceptance angles that is n a is equal to sin theta max hence it is equal to square root of n1 square minus n2 square now for an optical fiber we have industrial standards that define another parameter the fractional change in index delta so in those terms let us rewrite the numerical aperture of the optical fiber here n1 square minus n2 square can be written as n1 plus n2 into n1 minus n2 and here we add the two terms to n1 on numerator and denominator distributing it like this n1 plus n2 by 2 into n1 minus n2 to n1 by n1 now here n1 plus n2 by 2 can be substituted as n1 itself because n1 is approximately equal to n2 it is very much uh, similar but here n1 minus n2 here we need to know the difference between the refractive indices we know that the values are very small like if n1 is 1.5 n2 will be 1.50001 okay so where they are very near in values of refractive indices but here the difference in the refractive index that is what causes light to be confined within the core so that parameter is defined as delta n1 minus n2 by n1 is defined as the fractional index change delta hence this term becomes 2 n1 square delta so numerical aperture is equal to square root of 2 n1 square delta where delta is n1 minus n2 by n1 so in this figure we understand that light is transmitted into the fiber along this acceptance cone and this defines the numerical aperture light gathering ability of that fiber now the values of numerical aperture varies from 0.13 to 0.50 so large value of numerical aperture implies that the fiber can accept large amount of light from the source now let us see what are the different types of fibers first one is the step index fiber here the core and cladding have homogeneous refractive indices uniform ind refractive indices n1 and n2 respectively with n1 being greater than n2 that is the refractive index of the core will be greater than the refractive index of the cladding here the refractive index profile shows an abrupt change at the core cladding interface like a step discontinuity hence it is called a step index fiber now this represents a step index multi mode fiber that is we have different light pulses that can simultaneously transmit through the optical fiber and this represents the refractive index profile so if this axis represents the uh, dimension of the optical fiber we have at the center core region we have maximum refractive index at the cladding the refractive index is reduced and uh, outside the cladding we have the refractive index of the surrounding medium air or water now the dimension of this optical fiber of this cladding can come up to 230 micrometers and inside the core will have this dimension of 200 micrometers this is the case for a multi mode step index fiber okay whereas for a single mode step index fiber only a single light pulse can be transmitted through it refractive index profile is as shown here well the dimension of the optical fiber is that the cladding can have a diameter of 125 micrometers whereas the core has a dimension of only of less than 10 micrometers it is very small 
both of these fibers have uses in different fields when light is transmitted through a multimode step index fiber it may be distorted at the receiving end whereas in a single mode step index fiber the pulse does not get distorted as such now the next type of fiber is the graded index fiber or green fiber here the core has several concentric layers of different refractive indices that is the refractive index varies with distance from the fiber axis it has a maximum value at the center and decreases with increasing radius from the axis so the refractive index profile shows a gradual change at the core cladding interface and hence it is called a graded index fiber in this graded index fiber light rays deviating from the fiber axis are continuously refracted towards the axis hence all the rays traveling through the fiber will have almost the same optical path length in this figure we can understand it so here the refractive index of the core is maximum at the center region and it is continuously decreasing towards the core cladding interface so here we do not have a step discontinuity it is gradually decreasing okay now because of that when light enters this optical fiber it will be continuously refracted towards the optic axis and hence light will be uh, transmitting almost through the center of the core hence all the light rays will have almost same optical path length now here the dimension of the cladding is 125 micrometers whereas the dimension of the core is 50 to 100 micrometers well let us look through the advantages of optical fiber communication it has higher bandwidth and large communication capacity that is since the bandwidth the amount of light that can be transmitted through an optical fiber is large it has a larger information carrying capacity now with low loss and long transmission distance without repeaters this communication system is very efficient it has anti electromagnetic interference that is this optical fibers are immune to any electrical interferences like uh, in areas where we have voltage fluctuation high voltage fluctuations or where there are thunderstorms it is very suitable for communication to use optical fibers they do not have any crosstalk interference and they have high security now these optical fibers since they are uh, immune to electrical interference there can be no crosstalk between the different cables even if the cables are nearby one cable cannot pick up the signal from the other cable and other noises also cannot enter into the cables these cables are light in weight and they are short in diameter hence it is very much useful to save space in cable ducts now the raw materials for optical fibers is abundant in nature that is we make use of glass silica it is very much abundant in the form of sand the only disadvantage is that the process involved in converting silica to glass is highly expensive so the manufacturing technology is to be further developed to improve its efficiency so with that let us end today's discussion thank you